Greetings, salutations, respect, and love. I am Scott, and you, my friend, have wandered into the prog corner, and today I've got a very special episode for you. Today we're talking about that great American noise rock band, Deerhoof. Why are we talking about Deerhoof on a prog channel? Well, I contend that they are prog. They are super progressive no matter how you cut it. And Progressive Archives, Prog Archives, actually does have a listing for them under Prog Related. So that's good enough for me. I love them. They're an incredible band. They are led by uh, the great uh, Satomi Matsusaki. She is an amazing singer. Uh, well, she's not an amazing singer. She's an amazing vocal stylist, let's say. The band... Uh, started in 1994, 95 in that area as a uh, solo project for one Rob Fisk, who lasted exactly three albums with the band. Uh, but he enlisted drummer extraordinaire Greg Sonier uh, right away. So they were a two-piece. Uh, this girl moves from Japan to San Francisco within two weeks. She is now the bass player. At some point, uh, Satomi becomes the singer as well. And that's the three piece that basically did the first three albums. Uh, they were signed pretty quickly to kill rock stars. Uh, at some point they went to polyvinyl. Now they're uh, uh, on Joyful Noise, but uh, they've got 16 full lengths uh, that we are going to be ranking. We are not going to rank their first EP, which was the uh, Dirt Pirate Creed. Um, it's only six songs. It's not even a full album. Uh, we are not going to be looking at Green Cosmos, which was the 2005 EP, which is fantastic. It's kind of dancey. Uh, she's actually singing a little in Japanese here, so... It's kind of cool. I really do dig this record. This is actually Henry Rollins' favorite Deer Hoof album. Well, it's not an album, so we're not going to look at it. We are also not going to be looking at the live album, Fever 12, 16, 14, which is just a great way to uh, see what these guys are all about live. Nor are we going to be looking at the digital-only release, Love Lore, which came out in 2020. That thing is incredible. We're not including it for a couple of reasons. One, it never had an actual physical release. And secondly, these are all covers or reimaginings of other people's music. Uh, they're doing Arnett Coleman, Voivod, Gary Newman, The Police, The Beach Boys, Stravinsky, Kraftwerk, Silver Apples, uh, Velvet Underground, of course. Uh, it's just a fantastic digital only release. Highly recommend it, but we're not looking at that. We're going to be looking at the 16 proper deer hoof albums, starting with number 16. And it is their debut album, The Man, The King, The Girl. It's last for a reason. Uh, I actually only really like one song on here. That's the first song. Goran Rutt is fantastic. Really sets the tone for what these guys would be capable of later on. Uh, reissued recently the first three albums. That's why I've got them. All right, at number 15 is their third album, which I guess was recorded second. And this is Half Bird. Uh, it is, in fact, their third album, released in 2001. Um, it's getting the nod over the first one, uh, primarily because of Queen Orca Wicca Wind. That song is dynamite. There's actually a few good songs on here. It's definitely an improvement. Uh, but I get the feeling there was a reason this thing got held back. I get the feeling they knew it wasn't quite as good as it needed to be. At number 14 is their second album, which I believe was also uh, their third one recorded. It definitely shows growth. This is the album that's got the first flower. They have got, like, they've got three songs called Flower. The first one's on here. Uh, I really like Queen of the Lake, The Great Cartoon. This is where Deerhoof started becoming Deerhoof. I like it a lot. 
Okay, at number 13, we're talking about 2014's La Isla Bonita. I still got the price tag on there. <laughs> uh, this, uh, this record is kind of their return to guitar rock. Uh, somebody likened it to Deerhoof trying to tackle the Ramones. I don't know about all that. Uh, it's got a couple decent tracks on here. Paradise Girl's good. Doom is good. But overall, this was a little dip in uh, their late career. Some of their polyvinyl stuff wasn't quite as strong as uh, the Kill Rockstar stuff. This is not a great album, but it's got a couple great tracks on it. At number 12, we are going with 2016's The Magic. Uh, this is a confusing record. Uh, they're doing a lot of different things here. Uh, everybody's contributing to songwriting. Everybody's singing. Some of the songs work. Some of it doesn't. I guess three of these tracks were recorded specifically for the HBO TV show uh, Vinyl. I don't know if any of you guys watched that with Olivia Wilde and Ray Romano. Very cool about a record executive in the 70s. This record's all over the place. Some of it's good, some of it's not. In fact, the best stuff on here are the songs that have the weirdest song titles. The Devil and His Ar Anarctic Surrealist Retinue, real good. Learning to Apologize Effectively, really good. So, you know, you kind of know what you're getting by the song titles on that one. Okay, at number 11. The album that came out right after that, this is Mountain Moves 2017. This is Deerhoof employing a lot of guests. Uh, it's really a strange record. It's kind of slick. Uh, they're all over the map again, like the magic, but there's a little more focus here on what they're doing. Not everything works. Some of the guest appearances are just weird. Aquafina shows up on here. Don't know why, but Jen from Y Oaks on here it's great there's a couple covers they do a bob marley cover staple singers it it's a good record but nah, we're gonna get a whole lot better real fast here at number 10 from 2020 look at that artwork we're talking about future teenage cave artists and this record is as crazy and as chaotic as the artwork might imply. This is their return to experimentalism. This is their return to avant-garde. This is their return to the noisy, clanky, uh, almost irritating kind of sounds that Deerhoof is known for. I really like this record a lot. Um, like I said, after the couple of uh, polyvinyl releases, I was really pleased that they were getting back to deer hoof on that one all right now we're getting into the real good stuff at number nine from 2011 it's deer hoof versus evil i like this one a lot this one is twitchy it's got a lot of different things going on influence wise uh it's more electronic uh, it's bouncy. It's just a really bizarre record, but the songs are really strong throughout here. Uh, the Mary Barracks is fantastic. Uh, uh, I Did Crimes For You is amazing. Uh, no One Asked To Dance, Let's Dance The Jet. Those are all really cool songs. Uh, Deer Hub never did the same album twice, and this is a perfect example of that. At number eight, from 2012, breakup song oh this is just a really neat record there's a lot of great tracks on here uh it's definitely deer hoof uh trying to uh get into something new and every record they try to do something new i'm there for them whether it succeeds 100 percent or not this one really succeeds the title track well that's kind of a title track the album's called breakup song the first song's called breakup songs uh, There's That Grin is one of my favorite Deerhoof songs. Uh, I just really, really enjoy this record. Oh, and there's a song called Flower on here, too. Yes, there is. At number seven, it's the new one oh, from last year. The vinyl just came out a week ago. Actually, You Can is the name of this thing, and I really like this one a lot. There's some great songs on here. Plant Thief is fantastic. Scarcity is manufactured. This is them sounding a little bit more avant-garde. Uh, the songs are really quirky, and uh, 
it's really, really fantastic. Okay, at number six, The Runners 4. Now, this is an odd one. Double album. Uh, this is where uh, we've got a little switch Rooney going on. John Dietrich is actually playing the bass on here, and Satomi is playing guitar on here. And normally, it's reversed. Uh, this was the last record with Chris Cohen. After this, they went to a three-piece for one album. Uh, mm, there's some great songs on here. Scream Team is on here. Uh, what else is on here? Wrong Time Capsules on here. Uh, Twin Killers. Uh, I believe this is the highest rated uh, Deer Hoof album on Pitchfork. Um, it's really good. It's really strong. At number five, it's Reveille. This is their fourth album. This is the first album uh, without Rob Fisk. Uh, his replacement, John Dietrich, uh, Satomi Matsusaki, and uh, Greg Sonier. They're functioning basically as a three-piece on this. Uh, this is the record where everything really came together. The songs on here are fantastic. It, it covers a lot of ground. I like the album cover. It's a lot of people's favorite Deer Hoof album, but it's not mine. I've got some that I actually like better, and we're gonna go through them right now. I'm excited about number four. For a long time, this was my favorite Deer Hoof album. It's Milkman. And this is where Deerhoof really decided that they wanted to take on the world. They'd all quit their jobs by this point, and they were focusing on music full-time. Milkman is uh, just incredible. Uh, Giga Dance, uh, Milking, Sea, Dog on a Sidewalk, New Sneakers. I love this album. Uh, fantastic record. At number three, its predecessor. Karen O from the Yeah, Yeah, Yeah's favorite Deer Hoof album. It's Apple O. This thing is just incredible. Uh, they recorded it all live in the studio, all on one take, and then just kind of picked the parts that they liked the best. Oh, my goodness. Panda, Panda. <laughs> oh, man. Dummy discards a heart. Woo, seal to the kiss. And, yes, the third song called Flower is on this one. Apple O is just incredible. Highly recommended. At number two, their guitar album. Their heavy guitar album. And I love this thing. It's Offend Maggie. This is the first album with the new guitarist, Ed Rodriguez, from the Flying Luton Box. Uh, this album is hard. This album is complex. This album is progressive. This album is amazing. I highly recommend it to everybody here. There's a couple songs on here that just are the tears of music and love. Iguru Guru. Oh, two of the best songs they ever did. This is an amazing album. It would be number one for just about every other band in the universe, but Deer Hoof is so amazing. They actually have one better than it, and it was the one that came out right before when they were still a three-piece it's friend opportunity this thing is their masterpiece it came out in 2007 i love every song on here uh matchbook seeks maniac uh the perfect me plus 81 believe esp ah uh, if you're looking for a place to start with deer hoof i would probably recommend this one right here it's incredible it's perfect. It's a 10 out of 10. I love Deerhoof. I love everything they've ever done. Greg is an amazing drummer. You need to check out some YouTube clips of him. You know, he's playing like he's got a he's got a kick, a snare, one tom and one cymbal. I mean, it's just insane what this guy does with this tiny little kit. And then you have uh, you know, uh, Satomi with their crazy singing and the bass playing and now they got the two guitar players you know they got John and Ed and they're both amazing players uh, they do a lot of back and forth stuff a lot of uh, dissonant stuff a lot of crazy rhythmic stuff this band is nuts if you don't know them you need to I love Deerhoof I know they may not be you know capital P Prague but uh, I might actually put a Link in the description to uh, something they did, uh, Juan's Basement. You can see a little bit of their live uh, acumen. These guys are just 
nuts. Deer hoop. Check them out. I am Scott from the Prog Corner. And uh, uh, if you would, please hit that subscribe button. If you don't want to, that's cool too, whatever. Just keep watching my videos. I'm going to keep doing them either way. It doesn't matter. Anyway, I'll see you guys on the hippity hoppity flippity floppity. I'm Scott. See you later.